dear students in this lecture we will discuss about the fluxionality behavior of dienyl complexes so in the previous lecture we have uh, discussed about the fluxionality in eta 3 allyl complexes so now uh, we will discuss about the fluxionality in the complexes which are having dienyl generally we are taking the examples of cyclopenta dienyl complexes so where the uh, dienyl uh, is the ligand and this dienyl the cyclopenta dienyl can act as both eta 1 as well as eta 5 uh, dienyl uh, ligand so uh in these complexes we will see that how these complexes they show fluxional behavior so these are the example of some cyclopenta dienyl complexes which shows fluxional behavior so this is a complex where you will find that uh, one uh, cyclopenta dienyl ring is eta 5 type and other is uh, bounded through eta 1 Uh, it is it act, it is acting as eta one uh, ligand, so it is joint through only one carbon atom, and this is joint through five carbon atom. So it is eta five one is eta five C five H five, and other is eta one C five H five. So it is joint to this uh, iron center through a sigma bond. Now this is a copper complex where you will find that there are three ethyl triphenyl phosphine ligands. This is PTE three. So these are three tri Uh, ethyl phosphine ligands and one eta one uh, cyclopenta dienyl ring so it is joined through one carbon atom to this copper atom then this is a tin complex where you will find that all the four cyclopenta dienyl rings they joined as eta one uh, c5 h5 and in this titanium complex we have already given this example uh, in the uh, introduction of the fluxionality so uh, in this case you will find that two rings they will act as eta 1 type cyclopenta dienyl ring and uh, in this the two uh, cyclopenta dienyl rings they are acting as eta 5 c5 h5 so that all the five carbon atoms they are joined to the titanium now this is the chromium complex where you will find there are two cyclopenta dienyl ring one is eta 1 type and other is eta 5 type and this is the example where silicon is attached to the cyclopenta dienyl ring through eta 1 bonding so these are the different examples now we will see how these cyclopenta dienyl rings they show the fluxional behavior now we will uh, first show the example of this iron complex where you will find the cyclopenta dienyl ring is joint as eta 1 and 1 as eta 5 type so this is the example and this was first synthesized by this piper and wilkinsons in 1953 and uh, this is the structure of this compound so uh, this compound is the first compound that is reported to show the fluxional behavior so here you will see that this this is eta 5 ring where you will find all the five carbon atoms of the cyclopenta dienyl is attached to the are attached to the iron center while this is the eta 1 type ring where you will find that one carbon atom of this cyclopenta dienyl ring is attached to this iron center so that it is forming the sigma bond so you can see that the it's uh, if we see the nmr spectra of this compound then we will find three kinds of peaks in this case okay so in this case all the five hydrogen atoms there are five hydrogen atoms uh, there so all the five hydrogen atoms they have the similar uh, magnetic environment so they will show one peak so this eta 5 cyclopenta dienyl protons will show one peak so this is the peak that is related to this eta 5 cyclopenta dienyl ring because all the h atoms they are equally uh, they are equal magnetically so uh, these are the hydrogen atoms from h1 to h5 so i have given the name uh, number 1 2 3 4 5 to this ring so these are the h1 to h1 5 protons uh, showing this peak now uh, the uh, the other uh, two peaks Uh, uh, may be due to this uh, eta one cyclopenta dienyl ring, where you will find that one type of hydrogen atom is this, 
other type of hydrogen atoms are these that are present at 7 and uh, 10 and the other type of hydrogen atoms are present at 8 and 9. So, there are three types of hydrogen atoms in this eta 1 uh, ring and uh, this is different. These two are different because they are near to the metal and then these two are different. So, we will get actually this hydrogen which is, which is attached to the carbon atom which is directly bonded to this metal center. It will show a singlet. So, this hydrogen will show a singlet. So, this singlet is due to this eta 1 that is monoheptocyclopentadienyl ring and these two doublets, sometimes they may be two doublets or they may be two triplets. So, this these are 7, 8, 9 and 10. So, these four hydrogen atoms, they are showing double doublet at this position. So, uh, we should obtain such kind of NMR spectra in 1H NMR. While if we see the spectra, we will find only two peaks in this spectra at room temperature. So, this kind of spectra can be obtained only at very low temperature where the exchange process will be uh, will not be there. So, we will find actually at room temperature, we will find two singlets, one singlet, these and these peaks, they will merge. These are due to eta 1 cyclopentadienyl ring. So, these will merge and then this eta 1 will show one peak and this eta 5 will show one peak. So, at room temperature, the exchange of these proton atoms is very fast. Uh, uh, so, we will, uh, the all the hydrogen atoms, they will become equal so that all the hydrogen atoms, they will show one peak. I will show the NMR spectra of uh, this compound at room temperature this is the spectra at lower temperature so at lower temperature these peaks may be obtained but at higher temperature at room temperature we will find one peak for this because all the proton atoms will become equal we will show how this is the actually the fluxional behavior shown by this uh, molecule and one uh, singlet for this cyclopentadienyl ring so at room temperature that is around 30 degree centigrade, we will find two singlets in the 1H NMR spectrum of that iron compound. So, why this is show? Why we will we find only two singlets of 1H NMR spectrum of that compound? The answer is that there is the fast exchange of protons. So, there is the fast exchange of protons of monoheptocyclopentadienyl ring. So, fast exchange will take place that, that exchange is so fast that is very fast as compared to the time scale of NMR spectra. So, they cannot be observed the different kind of protons they cannot be observed at room temperature while the exchange can be frozen or lower down at lower temperature so that the exchange can lower down and the separate peaks will be observed. So, this fast exchange of protons is known as ring whizzing. Ring whizzing means ring walking. Actually, there is a walking of ring. You will see uh, there is the actually metal will uh, shift from one carbon to other carbon. So, this is known as ring whizzing or ring walking. This is a kind of intramolecular isomerization. And in this case, relative position of the substituent changes. Relative position of the substituent will change. But because all the substituents are hydrogen, so we cannot distinguish one structure from the other structure. So, all the hydrogen, they become actually equal due to ring-wedging process. 
हेप्टासिटी हेप्टिसिटी डज नॉट चेंज दी हेप्टिसिटी ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल इट डज नॉट चेंज ड्यूरिंग दिस रिंग विजिंग एट दिस रिंग विजिंग इट अकर्स इन अनसेचुरेटेड ऑर्गेनिक रिंग्स सो इस इट अकर्स जनरली इन अनसेचुरेटेड ऑर्गेनिक रिंग्स सो दिस इज रिंग विजिंग वी विल शो हाउ दिस रिंग विजिंग टेक्स प्लेस इन ईटा वन साइक्लोपेंटा डाई इनाइल कॉम्प्लेक्स so these are the uh, different forms of ring wedging so if uh, metal can shift on the carbon atom that is present alpha position to the metal center so if this is the metal center we i have shown this by the number 6 7 8 9 10 so there are five carbon atom so this metal atom is present on this carbon atom if this metal center will shift on this seven number carbon atom or it may shift to the 10 number carbon atom then this shift is known as one to shift one to shift one carbon atom to the alpha carbon atom so shifting of this metal from m to the 6 to 10 or 6 to 7 is a kind of one to shift now you can see that if this will shift here then it can again shift to here so this metal center will shift to this uh, position and then again shift to this eight position and then shift to seven position and again it can shift to the six position so this is a ring wedging and this is one to kind one to shift uh, where the uh, metal center it shifts from carbon atom to the alpha carbon atom so this is one to shift where you will find that all the uh, i have given the number to the hydrogen atoms so all the hydrogen atoms they become equal because in this structure metal is uh, bind to this hydrogen atom number 6 here with number 10 here with number 9 here with a uh, number 8 and here with number 7 so it is binding to all the is um, carbon centers that is attached to the different type of hydrogen atom so that all the hydrogen atoms will become equal so we will find only one peak for this kind of uh, cyclopenta dienyl eta 1 ring at higher temperature so this occurs at higher temperature and that higher temperature is room temperature so this is one to shift now uh, this uh, metal wedging uh, that uh, ring wedging can occur via one three shift also so in one three shift you will find that this is a kind of allylic shift so this metal will shift to its three position of the carbon atom that is the allylic carbon atom so this m will shift to this nine carbon atom then this metal can shift to this seven carbon atom then this metal center can shift to this 10 carbon center then this 10 can shift to this eight center so like again it can shift to the six so uh, this is a cycle and where you will find that these structures they can exchange so fast that they cannot be detected in the nmr spectra the different kind of protons that are of three types actually one type second type and third type but they are indistinguishable due to this ring wedging so the it will show only one peak so eta 1 will show only one peak so this is one three shift there may be possibility of third shift that is random shift so random shift is actually the combination of these two so if uh, one two shifting is occurring and one three shifting is occurring and both are occurring in the uh, cyclopenta dienyl ring then that shift is known as random shift so the other shift is random shift both one two shift and one three shift occur simultaneously so this kind of exchange it occurs at room temperature hence we will get two peaks one for this eta 1 cyclopenta dienyl ring and other for eta 5 cyclopenta dienyl ring so i think you can uh, you understand better that how all the hydrogen atoms they become equal because this metal is present at each carbon center at 6 at 7 at 8 at 9 and at 10 so in each uh, met, uh, carbon center this metal is present due to this exchange so all the hydrogen they become uh, magnetically equal so in this figure 
I have shown the effect of temperature on the fluxional behavior of this complex, this iron complex. So, in this iron complex, I have shown some structures. You will find that this is the eta 5 ring and this is the eta 1 ring. So, this eta 1 ring, this eta 5, it is showing all the carbon or all the hydrogen atoms, they are similar. But here, these are not similar but due to ring whizzing they become similar so you can see that here this uh, metal center is attached to the cyclopentadienyl ring through six carbon atom here after ring whizzing this iron center is attached to uh, these uh, cyclopentadienyl ring through seven carbon center and in this structure you will find this iron center is attached through this nine carbon center and likewise there may be the possibility of many uh, positions that uh, of the carbon atom that is attached to this iron atom so the exchange will occur so fast that it cannot be detected at higher temperature in the NMR spectrum. So, uh, I have again shown uh, this uh, cyclopentadienyl alone. Okay. So, this is the spectrum of this compound at minus 100 degree centigrade and minus 80 degree centigrade. So, at this temperature, this is very low temperature. So, at this temperature, the molecule will show the frozen type so that uh, the exchange will become so low, so low that we can distinguish the peaks of these cyclopentadienyl rings. So, if I have shown this cyclo, uh, eta 1 cyclopentadienyl ring. If there is no exchange at lower temperature, you will find I have shown the the uh, the hydrogen atom that is attached to that carbon atom which is directly attached to metal center that is SC. And these two hydrogen atoms which are near to this metal center, they are shown by HS. And these H hydrogen atoms which are far away from this metal center, they are shown by HA. So, this uh, hydrogen will show the peak at the upfield position. So, this is the peak of this hydrogen atom. This singlet is of uh, eta 5 C5 H5. So, this is for cyclopentadienyl. So, we will concentrate on uh, the peaks that are obtained from this eta 1 uh, cyclopentadienyl so there are the peaks one is this and the other peaks are these so these peaks are for h7 to h10 these are for h7 to h10 so this this peak this is h6 peak this is for this proton which is directly attached to the carbon atom which is attached to the metal center and these two peaks they are for h7 to h10 Okay, so now again we can um, divide them. Uh, this peak is for HS. These are downfield. So this peak is for HS and this peak is for HA because in between these, this will uh, uh, be seen at the upfield position and this will be at the downfield uh, position. So this is of HS and this doublet is of HA they it may be triplet also okay so at lower temperature we will find three kind of peaks uh, actually two kind of peaks one is double doublet and other is singlet so this these three peaks are for eta 1 cyclopentadienyl at very low temperature that is minus 80 to minus 100 degree centigrade so as we increase the temperature we have increased the temperature. So, as we increase the temperature, you will find these two peaks, they will collapse. Collapse. So, the fluxional behavior will start. So, broadening of peak takes place and at room temperature, these two peaks and this peak, it, it is also uh, collapsing. So, these three peaks, they give one peak. So, this is the peak of eta 1 now and this is the peak of eta 5. So, at room temperature, we will find only two peaks, two singlets, one of eta 5 and the other for eta 1 cyclopentadienyl ring. So, this is the effect of temperature, how NMR spectroscopy is helpful in studying or in characterizing the fluxional molecules. So, as the temperature increase, collapsing of the peaks will take place so that 
so we can study these kind of molecules with the help of dynamic uh, nmr and by decreasing the temperature there is a temperature range where we can study their um, the um, peaks uh, of these uh, molecules so now we will study about the one two and one three shift and random shift so what kind of shift is responsible for this fast exchange so i we have i have shown you that one two shift may occur one three shift may occur or both kind of shifts may occur simultaneously so this can be explained on the basis of shifts i will i will show you a shift and how we can observe with the help of spectra this that here one two shift may occur and in this spectra one three shift was responsible for the fast exchange of these protons as we increase the temperature now i will show you how one two shift and one three shift occurs in eta one cyclopentadienyl ring in the these complexes so first we will see the one two shift so if this m will undergoing one two shift so this m will ex transfer shift from here to here so if it is shifting from here if it is showing one two shift then it can shift here and here so we can write the hc when this metal will shift to Uh, one to shift to this or this so we can see that this hc will change to hs if it is shifting here and if it is shifting here this hc will exchange with this hs okay now if the metal center shifts here then if again it will shift uh, show one to shift it can sh shift here or it can shift here so i have written this hs which is going to exchange with these two that is with hc and ha so uh, if metal is present here after shifting here then it can again show one two shift so one two shift means this hs will exchange with this hc and with this ha so this hs can exchange with this hc and this ha now after shifting here this m uh, can if this uh, exchange here so if the metal will shift here then from here this metal again shift with this or this 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 metal can shift here or here so that it can exchange its ha with this hs and this ha okay so this is the third one and if this metal center uh, uh, shifts here so again from this position it can shift here or it can shift here because it is showing one two shift so this ha can exchange with this ha and this ha can exchange with this hs now if this metal atom is present here after one two shifting then again it can exchange with this uh, this uh, carbon and with this hydrogen these two hydrogens it can exchange so this uh, is the position of the metal center and this hydrogen can be exchanged with this hc or this ha so we have written all the exchange that may possible if one two shift occur again i am explaining you if one two shift occur so if this metal center will shift from here to here this is one two shift then exchange of these hydrogen atoms will take place so hc can exchange with this hs or it can exchange with this hs after coming to this here this um, carbon atom this metal again shift to here or here so it can exchange this hs can exchange this hc or can exchange with this ha now after shifting this metal can be there here and now it the hydrogen ha that can exchange with hs or ha if one to shifting is there so this ha can exchange with this ha or this ha can exchange with this hs now if metal center is here then it can again shift here or here so this ha will exchange with this hs or with this ha now if metal center is present here then it can again uh, exchange with this hc or this hs can exchange with this hs so this uh, are the exchanges so these are the total exchanges which can occur if one two shift in this uh, cyclopentadienyl occurs so in this case you will find that in each case this hc is exchanging this is exchanging with hs and hs
okay now see the hs so hs is exchanging with hc and ha hs is exchanging with hc and ha while in case of ha you will find that ha is changing with hs and at the another side it is exchanging with ha and here also it is exchanging with ha and hs so you can see that half of the ha is remains ha and half is actually it is changing okay so half ha is changing to hs others they remain as such so it is showing no exchange so ha is exchanging only half time half time you can see that half time it is exchanging half type it is not exchanging because it remains as such while hs and hc they are exchanging at all the times if one two shift is taking place then you can see that hc is converting into hs or it is converting into hs or hs is converting into hc or it is exchange with ha so hc and hs you can see that it is exchanging each time but ha is exchanging only for half time so peak for hs will broaden faster than ha i will show you with the help of a spectra where you will find that this ha are not exchanging okay so the broadening of the peaks of hs will be faster as compared to that of ha i will show you with the help of uh, nmr spectra so this is the nmr spectra where one two shift is occurring okay so i have told you that these two peaks are of hs and ha these this is hs so this peak is of hs and these are ha so this peak is for ha and this peak is for hc so at very low temperature you will find these distinct peaks doublet and one singlet so as we increase the temperature you will find the collapsing of these peaks okay and in uh, particularly if you see this case you will find that there is asymmetry in the broadening of peaks these peaks they are broadened and there is asymmetry in the broadening okay so peak of hs this is the peak of hs this is the peak of ha this is the peak of hs this is the peak of ha peak of hs and peak of S ha so you will find that this peak of hs will first broaden this is asymmetrical kind of broadening both the peaks are not broaden simultaneously but one of the peak will broaden first and then will collapse okay so in this case you will find that hs peak is broadened first so this is a kind of one to shift so this is actually explaining how this hs they are actually exchanging very fast because they are converting they are exchanging each time so hs is exchanging fast while this ha is not exchanging fast because it is exchanging only half time so it is exchanging only with hs while this hs is exchanging with hc and ha so it's exchanging fast so it will broaden first now you will see the difference with the 1 3 shift so in case of 1 3 shift you will find that this metal center can shift here or this can shift here okay so if one three shifting is taking place then you will find that this hc center can exchange with ha and ha so this x the hc uh, this hydrogen atom can exchange with ha and ha okay now this if this metal atom is present here then you will find or you can say that if it is shifting here then now the metal centers the center uh, the hydrogen atom is ha so if it is ha then it can exchange with the third carbon center hydrogen atom so it can exchange with either this 
or it can exchange with either this so hs and sc so this ha can exchange with hc and hs okay if this metal center is present here then it can the hydrogen hs so i have written the hs it can be exchange with ha or hs so it can exchange with ha and hs okay so if this metal is present here uh, you have already seen that in a, this metal can shift in each carbon atom so if it is present here after one three shift then this ha can exchange with its hs and with this hc so this ha can exchange with this hs and hc so in this way you will find these five kind of exchange in one during one three shift and in this way you will find that this hc is exchanging every time it is converting into ha and it is converting it to ha this ha is also exchanging each time it is exchanging with hc and it is exchanging with ha but in case of hs you will find that it is exchanging with ha only because half time it remains as such it is exchanging with hs they are same so now in this case in case of one three shift you will find that hs is changing actually only half time okay while ha and hc they are changing all time so peak for ha will broaden faster than hs so in this case because ha is changing each time so it is exchanging very fast it is not exchanging so fast because it is changing only half time so its time is less so it is exchanging faster ha is exchanging faster so it will collapse but is it will broaden fast so i will show you the peak of this kind of uh, this kind of uh, shifting where the nmr spectra will show different type of broadening this is the 1h nmr spectrum for copper compound in which there is one cyclopentadienyl that is eta1 type and three triethyl phosphine ligands so this uh in this case at very low temperature you will find these uh, this doublet and one singlet for eta 1 this is only for eta 1 c5h5 okay so now i have shown you uh, this nmr where you will find that there is broadening of hs Uh, peak first so this will broaden first it means it is one two shift here in this case you will find that this ha peak will broaden first and this is the case of one three shift i i will again show you the shifting where you have studied that in case of one three shift this hs is exchanging slow so which proton is exchanging fast ha in between among hs and ha ha is exchanging fast so ha the peak due to ha will broaden fast so uh, this is the uh, one three shift where you will see that ha peak will broaden first so if we get such kind of nmr spectra it means there is a possibility of one three shift if we'll get this kind of spectra that means it is a kind of one two shift and if we obtain this kind of spectra it means it is having both kind of shift so in this case it is a random shift where both kind of shift takes place so that both the peaks they broaden simultaneously or we can uh, uh, suggest that as we decrease the temperature both the peaks the the frozen they separate simultaneously so this is the case of random shift actually this one three shift occurs in this copper complex these uh, two spectra they are only drawn to explain the one two shift and random shift this copper uh, complex is uh, showing uh, it shows uh, the one three kind of shift because it's collapsing 
or the broadening of the peak takes place as the HA will broaden first. So, this will show the 1 3 shift. So, with the help of NMR spectra, we can easily uh, told about the shifting, which kind of shifting is taking place in eta 1 cyclopentadienide complexes. So, in this case, the broadening of HS is taking first. Here, the broadening of HA is taking first, and here. Uh, the broadening of both the peaks will take simultaneously. So, it is a kind of random shift. Now, one more example in which there is uh, a cyclopentadienyl ring and it is also it also shows the fluxional behavior. So, this is a titanium complex where uh, there are two eta 5 C5 H5 uh, rings and two eta 1 C5 H5 rings. We have already drawn this in the fluxional introduction lecture and in this case there are two types of exchanges. One exchange is within this eta 1 C5 H5. So, here uh, the, the migration of Ti around eta C5 H5 ring that is known as ring wedging and it occurs via 1 2 shift. At very, it is a very low energy process. I will discuss again. And then the other one is the exchange of eta 5 with the eta 1 groups. Okay. So, uh, this kind of exchange occurs at very high temperature that is room temperature. And it is a very low energy process. So, it occurs each time. So, it occurs normally. Uh, and uh, even at low temperature, but this exchange occurs only at room temperature. So, at room low temperature, one singlet for this eta C5 H5 will be there in the NMR spectra, while one, one multiplet will be observed for this eta 1 C5 H5 ring wedging because it has three kind of hydrogen atoms but due to ring wedging 1 2 shift it will show only one multiplet okay so one uh, singlet and one multiplet will be observed at low temperature while at high temperature all the 20 protons they appears equivalent because both the processes they are taking place in at high temperature so that all the protons that of eta 1 c5 h5 and eta 5 hc5 h5 they become equivalent so at high temperature it will show only one peak so this is uh, the uh, the compound which is showing two kind of exchange simultaneously at room temperature now we can understand the uh, the kind of shift in this iron complex with the help of this spectra. So, now uh, you can easily uh, uh, deduce that in this case you will find this HS peak is actually broadened first as we increase the temperature. So, it is the case of 1 to shift. So, in the, in the case of this complex, the ring wedging or the fluxionality or the exchange of protons, it takes place through 1 to shift. So, with the help of the NMR spectra, only we can, uh, we can suggest about the exchange or shifting of metal center, exchange of protons or shifting of metal centers in the particular cyclopentadienyl complex. If uh, this HS is collapsing, uh, this broadened first, then it means it is 1 to shift. If HA is broadened uh, first, then it is 1 3 shift. And if both the peaks they broaden together, then it is a random shift. So, finally, we will conclude the lecture. And in this lecture, we have discussed about the different molecules uh, of uh, cyclopentadienyl uh, ligand which are showing fluxionality. So, we have discussed one iron complex and then we have discussed about the ring wedging of eta 1 uh, cyclopentadienyl ring where you will you have uh, seen that there may be 1 2 shift, there may be 1 3 shift or there may be 1 2 shift and 1 3 shift uh, simultaneously. Uh, so, it is a kind of random shift. So, with the help of uh, these shifts, we can 
study the nmr spectra of fluxional molecule and with the help of this nmr uh, spectra we can deduce that what kind of shift is taking place in that particular eta 1 cyclopentadienyl ring of that particular dienyl complex so likewise we have also discussed the different kind of uh, exchange in a complex which is having both eta 5 and eta 1 cyclopentadienyl rings and there two kind of exchange were taking place that are within the eta 5 and uh, within the eta 1 and exchange can occur between eta 5 and eta 1 rings. So this is all about the fluxional behavior of dienyl complexes. So thank you very much.